similar to death by accident, it can be disorienting. Yes, and can in a sense leave a soul both scattered and unconscious until they are able to regain a sense of clarity. So it can be like when someone is intoxicated with alcohol and someone hits them over the head with something and they pass out, they wake up when they're going to wake up, yes? It might be a while. So they may stay in a soul stasis for some time until they come to. Now, there are spirit medics. There are spirit guides that come in to assist. And again, the more spiritually connected that soul is, the more alive that connection is, the more support, the more nourishment, and the more guidance there is for them in that delicate state. Yes. So again, it all depends on the nature of that person's energy, how these things are really going to affect them. But in general, suicide ends up becoming a snake eating its tail if a person's not careful. Because what will happen is after the suicide, usually because the soul has not integrated all of the themes, because it has run away from them. In some situations, again, some situations, suicide is fear. Some situations, suicide is what you call euthanasia. So it's important to talk about differences here. Yes. But in situations where the suicide is avoidance, fear, rejection, running away, this oftentimes will cause that soul to then orbit to another lifetime where they can explore the same things, but perhaps in a gentler way. However, they now bear the feeling of having murdered themselves. Now, they might not feel that at first in their new lifetime, but once they hit puberty, it will start to turn on. And this is why a lot of people on your planet, once they become teenagers, start to get very depressed because many people on your planet, yes, have had past lives where that was the exit, where either they had harmed themselves to death or someone else did. So that's why some of those feelings come up. But that, again, is a conversation for another time. We know some of this can get quite heavy. And we know that when we are together, it is easier to hold things that are heavy. And it makes us stronger. Yes. Our species sees death as something to smile at, as something to play with as something to love as you would love a cherished friend and to see life as the same. We see life and death truly as the same. For us, life and death have simply blended into existence. So when we speak of these things, we speak with this type of penetration into the nature of the matter because when we see the nature of the matter, we can see that there is nothing the matter. We can see that it is just a continuation of your story. And for many of you, we are there with you and we assist you. For many of you, we do this. And for many of you, you have actually done that for us in certain ways. Some of you have evolved to such a level that you have actually become some of our civilization's spirit guides. For as we had said, it's not a one-way street. When we are being channeled through the channel in front of you, there is also a transference of information from the channel's consciousness to my reality. And for us, it's like receiving ancient wisdom from the past, secret esoteric wisdom and power from the past that we could only access through this type of link. So that's what we mean for those of you that have the Sasani link or the hybrid link. You have actually played the role of spirit guide for your counterpart. You're the ancestor spirit. Just as you pray to your ancestors for wisdom, power, and guidance, that's what we have done to summon contact with all of you. 